trying to think. Somebody else was going to try and be here from earlier. Ah. I well, I, I hope they manage to come. Dr. McLeafy, Elify. Oh, yeah. Mc, uh, 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 Alifi. Yeah, yeah. She was here earlier and said she had to take a call that she was going to try and be back for for um, your Zoom room, Gaia's Zoom room. Well, thank you so much. I, I hope that she makes it. Um, what I, um, tonight is about our heart gardens and the plan that okay, Gaia. I, I'm sorry, I had it backwards. I thought heart gardens was on Thursday. Did you switch at one point? No, nope. it's always been uh, our heart gardens on Tuesdays, but it's still me, Marco. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just that tonight we have a focus and it's still about uh, Gaia because she's the one that gave me the plan um, um, inspired in me the um, the, in, the inspiration of um, indoor gardens and there goes my phone <laughs> somebody I can ignore oh sorry <laughs> I was just uh, looking at my phone to make sure it didn't call you. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I just silence you thing. Um, yeah. So I use Tuesday nights to talk about uh, the plan that Gaia gave me uh, over the years uh, through inspirations. And one of the inspirations is a poem that I wrote um, inspired. And it's not a short poem. Um, and so I, I honored it, the, the, the magic that put those words uh, down on paper through my hand. I honored that by memorizing it. And so it's one of the uh, first videos that uh, I did. Uh, this was made back in December of 2017. Oh. And so it, this actually really, well, let me, let me tell you, <laughs> uh, first I have to share screen, right? And so I've done that wrong, 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 wrong. Want to check at least um, Whoop. the share sound. Yeah, I know. I've got to stop it. <laughs> All right, let's see if we could do it right this time. Share screen down in the bottom two corners. Yeah, bottom box, okay. Share screen. And so here we are, right? Are you seeing Crow Surgeon? It's gonna get I'm big. seeing YouTube. That's the one, okay. I oh yeah, it. there it says Crow Surgeon. There you go. Hi, I'm Shannon MacArthur, and I've come here today to tell you another of my poems. Can you hear it? It's about that crow that you see in the picture behind it's me. It's pretty quiet. Is it coming through the, did you check the box for use a computer speak, computer yeah, sound? Yeah, I did. That happened. Okay, maybe you just so, have to turn it up a little. Oh, wait, I can turn mine off. My girlfriend and I, we were sitting by the river watching the water flow and the curious behavior of a big black crow. He found a big worm and he hopped on a rock as big as an altar had he been of the cloth. He snipped off the head, or was it the tail? To get to the goal he sought was there. Like a surgeon, he cut down half the length of the worm his beak was his scalpel, and he combed and he probed and he found, spread what he found about like a fan. In awe, we saw his focus and care and wondered the purpose he labored so there. Isn't a worm a passable dinner? It seemed big enough to fill a crow belly, but it wasn't for dinner and he carefully continued until his purpose was done. The object he sought, his surgery revealed, I swear it appeared to be a little black pearl. 
His beak was a jar, so gently he held it. How precious it seemed. What could it have been? Was it a heart or a pearl yet unknown that only grows deep inside of a worm? <sighs> After he'd gone, we checked out the rock. There should be some evidence for sure, so we thought. We found the remains set out as described, the short bit cut off and the long part half slit and then combed wide. We agreed it to be the weirdest darn thing and we went back to sit back and watch as we beam. A short conversation about where he'd gone and the purpose he'd put to the pearl that he'd found. Ah, with a smile we decided a use for the pearl. As she is a crow, what a gift for his girl. Along about then, the time came to be to check once more on the worm body. But other than Icor, a smear and no more remained from the surgery performed there before. Instead of for dinner, that worm became twice what he was, as none remained. No oyster lives through the search for a pearl, but no murder was done for this black one. A wonder to ponder as the river flows. Oh, thank you for listening. Bless you and all you do. Cool. I I'm, so, I'm sorry the sound wasn't so good, Marco. But you got it, didn't you? Yeah, it was just a little, a little in place. I just turned my speaker up. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a thought there, and I lost it. My fault. No, no, no. It was not that at all. So. Um, I hope it was a good one. I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's something to do. <laughs> that cat didn't sound real happy. No. Um. What do you think it was? A heart or a pearl yet unknown? And what was going on? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I you know, right, right off the bat, I re now I remember my question. What river were, were you sitting by? That would have been the Thompson, oh, sorry. Um, Fraser. Yeah. Fraser. And that's Fraser in, River. in BC? Yeah. It goes out through Vancouver. Oh, cool. We were camping and they had these big rocks about this big in between the campsites. And, and we were on the end of a, a row of campsites that are on the river. And there was lawn um, beside us. And there was this cinder um, path that ran along the the roadway behind us and so this this cinder path um the, the the rocks went around us and and then lined the pathway and so this crow like we're facing the river and this crow you know makes a big fuss just like a robin does you know about listening cocking his head both ways and running a little bit and cocking his head both ways and listening and poking and and so we noticed him of course and and so we paid attention it seemed like performance art marco 
Yeah. So we, he really got our attention. And then we watched him as he pulled this great, huge, long worm. I'm talking like eight inches long or something. And he lays it out on one of these big rocks and it's almost flat. Yeah, that's unusual. Yeah. Yeah, and so we're kind of, you know, over our shoulders, look, you know, because we've got our feet up on, you know, we're in, in camp chairs and we've got our feet up on the rock and we're looking over. <laughs> and he went through this whole procedure where he snipped off the head and put it over there. And then he cut down half the length of the worm and spread it out, combed it out carefully. And that the picture of the crow that I pointed out, that's what he looked like. He in profile, it, he was so proud of himself that he had got this thing. And then he flew off. And then so we were deep in conversation, but what we had just seen, wow, that was really weird. It was performance art, man. And so then we we had to go and check out of the what had really happened and we saw the worm you know set out as yeah. the words described and um it was amazing and what the um you know a murder is um a group of crows right you froze up. Yeah, yeah you froze you know that a, a murder is a group of crows do you yes yeah um, so yeah, no murder was done for this. Um, and, uh, and, and the worm lived twice or double. So I, I think that's a really good thing. And, and so, you know, I, I just, <sighs> I just can't imagine what he, what, that, what he would have found in there. You know, I absolutely agree with you. And you know what I did? I went looking. What is in the environment of a worm that could get, you know, stuck like like um, like sand in an oyster, or um, I guess maybe that could be like a kidney stone type of situation. That's what I was that, thinking. That's that's all, but I don't know that worms consume anything that could end up being that size. I just can't imagine. But sand isn't that big, the, but, but pearls can be. Right, right. Yeah, I, I don't know. If, if... And if there's a blockage, uh, I, I can imagine that they might have a different um, wavelength that they all share all the animals. And so he put out a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's got me curious about worms for sure. Well, I did find out something. And that is that one of the things that is in soil is Mycobacterium vaccae. Right. Which is the bacteria that uh, emits the medicine, Mother Nature's remedy for clinical depression and anxiety and, and uh, upsets. And so the, um, it seemed to me that, you know, if, if there was something that would be so prized by the crow, as something that was medicine he could take to his girlfriend, you know, maybe it was that, but what it really was, was inspiration for me to add that bacteria to the plan that had been growing in my mind that I used to call communal community gardens um, and, and became the Our Heart Gardens idea of, of sheltered uh, crops and people working together to create food for the community yeah. and uh, provide the medicine of mother nature uh, where they work, where they are. Uh, so they don't even have to think about it. They're just happier. I want everybody to be happy. <laughs> I, I remember um, transplanting season in the greenhouse. 
it was just I would just we did all ours. This was back a few years. And we're still doing, you know, transplanting this from the seed flats to the bigger trays that you would then sell and you know all by hand you know yeah sharp, a sharpened stick making a hole for each little plant doing each one and yeah. i did them by the by by the flat the hundreds hundreds yeah and you know dinner time came and it's like oh it's okay i'll be in, in a little bit i just wanted to keep because you just sit there and it's just so calming everything just just everything feels good you just and just one little baby after another, yeah. one baby after another. Tuck them in, you know, get them watered down, move the next one. And yeah. so I, I would, I would often, you know, go, you know, many straight hours. Like, like, like noon, I think was would have been, would have been a, a time I actually stopped and ate. But from like about noon till sometimes 10 o'clock at night during the main season, I just one after another, somebody had to do it. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, but, but it just, I remember, I remember the feeling, you know, so well, how it, how, how peaceful it makes you working with the soil. Yeah. yeah. And, and there was a, I know last week there were, we were talking about, you know, the bacteria and, happy farmers yeah the truth is we don't have a lot of happy farmers because they've killed their soil they don't have the bacteria i know i know you know we're still farming you know well you can look at the ones who are a problem marco or you can concentrate on the ones who are making a difference and put your energy in that direction you know you've only you've got a a hundred pieces of energy per day, okay? If you spend it all on woes and problems, you got nothing left over to give to the good stuff. But I saw, I saw, and I, it should still be on on, on Netflix, the, uh, what is it? Uh, Kiss the Ground? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure I have. Uh, and Down to Earth is another one. And that's that's uh, um, available to, right now. I'm trying to remember, there was another one yet. I saw something. Need to you know, Grow? That, uh, you know, I may not have seen that yet. It's oh, like, that one you really need to see. That one is really quite amazing. And right now it's there. actually free to see. Yeah. Uh, the reason I mention that is because Michael Smith, he created this, um, it, it looks like um, an eight-sided dome. And it, he calls it the, the green power machine. And what, is, what he's got in the bottom of it is algae pools. And they harvest that every day. They, they harvest one of these pools. And, and after they dry it, I guess, um, they burn it, and that creates biochar, and it's um, fed by methane that's created during the growing, and it's all enclosed, so there's no um, no wastage, and it's a closed system, and it creates um, fuel, fertilizer, and food because all of that heat can be used to grow plants. And the biochar is the fertilizer that is an amazing fertilizer. It holds water and- um, Yeah, I've never, I can't imagine making biochar out of algae though. That's interesting. I mean, usually it's, it's done on much, you know, on, on trees, you know, wood scrap or, or, or fresh yeah. trees and everything, you know, um, but I, you know, it just seems like such a small amount. Well, I don't know how big this thing is. That you're, uh, the bats are pretty big. Yeah. 
and um, I would, I, I couldn't even guess. I, I can't estimate that kind of thing. I don't yeah. know. So I'm just thinking if, if they, if they, the process they use to burn it may make a difference as to how much actual char you end up with. Well, he had, he, he had a, a gardener who was uh, working with his stuff. Uh, and he's the next one in the, the need to grow uh, food uh, or film. And I'm trying to remember his name. I want to say Brad Cutter, but that's wrong. That's wrong. Um, anyway, you'd, you'd find it if you went to the need to grow movie. And I don't want to cut out to do that now. Yeah, but no. what he did was he created... Um, gardens on pavement using um, what he called socks, which is basically material holding, you know, um, this, this big around uh, with soil in it that you plant in the top. And so the, the moisture would be only in there and it, because that material holds the water in, there's less wastage of the water. Uh, and weeds don't grow in it so he was getting like amazing plants and then the city decided they wanted to use the land he was using for putting a parking lot in yeah and so he had to go and find something new um and the the green power machine that was burnt down um but he well there's that's part of the movie and and you'll you I don't want to spoil the movie. It's a good movie. Let me put it that way. Um, and they, they, in the movie, they even, even got a little girl, uh, a brownie, you know, a little girl scout brownie uh, who goes to head office and they turn her down to see them because of this promotion that she has got against GMOs. Um, get GMOs out of Girl Guide cookies. It's like, Right on, child. I love the kids. They're so imaginative. You know, who would have thought about using something like that in a movie? And it made the, the movie really real. I really appreciate how they presented everything that they did in that movie. So here is a plug for that place, that, that movie. Well done. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really you know, nice that the technology that has gotten, I mean, perspectively on, you know, it's going to be different, but essentially so cheap that it's in, you know, many activist hands to be able to make these movies, you know, in such good quality as they do now. Yeah, really, really good. Uh, the Sixth Sun is another movie that um, I, I encourage people to, to see. Have you seen that one yet? It's, uh, it doesn't have to do with agriculture. It is more indigenous wisdom and ancient wisdom um, and bringing it into the now. Uh, and it's very, very good. You just went dark. Oh, this, this, this is the light from my other screen. I was trying to insert something and it's a darker screen. <laughs> I can still see you. Oh, I can hear you. I'm sort of here. Yeah, you look like a, a superhero. Was that the sixth sun? Uh, um, yeah, the sixth sun. Yeah. Probably with only one E and one H. <laughs> And it's S U N. Hmm. Close. So you saw, um, you were part of today's uh, video with um, Jamin, weren't you? Or were you not? Uh, were you there? There's a good question. I think I was. 
I'm sorry if I forget. I mean, we were we were recording and not recording, recording and not. Recording. That's the one. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That was fun to make. I'm I'm glad I wasn't running the tech. <laughs> but yeah, the um, humanity rising that um, I've been involved with with the chat people, it really feels very powerful. Um, in as much as I'm meeting the people that um, I feel are important to, to have um, on, on, um, with me going forward. Uh, it's, a, um, it's an exciting time, uh, the grounding of the dream, you know, that, uh, oh geez, it could actually happen. You know, you hold a dream for so long that you never know, well, I never knew um, if it could ever come true, you know? And this is the time for dreams coming true. So um, I shouldn't be surprised. But uh, so I had a, a, a rune reading uh, the other day. And uh, this is the fellow who told me to watch for whales on the way to Colorado. <laughs> uh, yeah both of us laughed at that one and he said no really that's what I, yeah 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 watch for whales uh, and the the amazing thing was is that i saw one mind you it was a carved tray upon the wall but it was a whale <laughs> um and it happened at, at, at a time when i really needed to have uh some confirmation that uh you know this is real and true and, and happening now. And, uh, and so it is. Um, I, I was not, um, I was not imagining myself to be uh, any kind of um, um, evangelist. And, and yet that is what is being suggested by him is that now is the time to become an evangelistic pagan. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get there yet myself. I, I... No, I, I really feel, you know, if we, if we love her the way, the way I love her, uh, she gave me my life. This whole experience is due to her, uh, and it's uh, it's time to give honor where honor is due. I I feel, and so I do. You know, um, it's kind of fun once you realize you can step back and let her drive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when not when you're actually in the car, but yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, earlier this year, a couple months ago, I don't know exactly when, I had, I had a day where um, the, 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 the gist of the, of the day was I need to learn to not try and control everything and go with the flow. To, to, to the extent the universe wanted to point that out to me that four different people, um, well, actually five, if it, including me, I, I used the phrase, um, people aren't salmon, we don't swim upstream, we don't need to swim upstream, we need to go with the flow. Now, I said it, and then four other people that day said it back to me, and I'm like, and and then one of them uh, was Malini. She uh, she used it too, and it just, I mean, just just cracked me up. She says, "You know, you got to go with the flow. It's just you got to quit hanging on to, you know, controlling every little piece, and just let it happen." And that's not been easy for me to just let things happen. Um, But yeah, so I've been working more on that. It, you know, these last couple months, however long it's been since since that day. 
which is good for you. And and I guess on my on my own, my one goal for this year for, for last year, imagine that I got through the whole year and, and kept to it. I did not let myself be in a hurry. I mean, like, like be rushed to do something, you know, yeah. especially, especially other people's emergencies that mm -hmm. resulted from poor planning. Yeah. Um, if I get, or, or, or anything I want to do, if I, if I'm starting to like, oh, it, you know, I'm going to run late. You know what? We can do it another day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Learning <laughs> that is huge, Marco. So this year I, you know, it's like, you know, my daughter's like, you know, well, we can finally, you know, the, the restaurants are open back up. It's limited seating, but we could go sit and start having breakfast once a week. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And then, of course, then we got locked down harder again. You can't do that anymore. But the point was fruit flies driving me crazy. Um, kind of lost my point now. Um, it had to do with Oh, relaxing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. They're not rushing. And I told her, I said, yep. I said, that's fine. But there's one absolute rule in the whole thing. Don't tell me I have to be somewhere. You don't eat, you know, no, 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 no. There's, there's no, we're there as long as we're there. I don't want to be once have a watch looked at or a suggestion of, you know, what time I, 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 I will enjoy my time with you. I will not be rushed. And she's like, fair enough. <laughs> like, good, because it wasn't really an option. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, ground rules are really important. You know, uh, that is, you know, one of the major ways of um, screwing something up if, if, if you don't know what's appropriate. And so you got to have a little negotiation. And so conversation is where it starts. Yeah. And that's why I'm really impressed with this place, the conversation.cc. Yeah. You have to have enough conversations in order to make things happen. And I can't think of a thing that gets done these days that doesn't, you know, even with as much automation and, and ready to use out of the box, there's still, you know, a level of communication. That no matter how hard uh, you know the, the the system right now is trying, they, they can't avoid some conversation in order to get things done. And once people are conversing, that's such a fluid thing as we've seen here many times. The tangents we can go off on, and and so there's always anytime conversation is happening, there's a chance some inspiration will happen there that makes all the difference for a lot of people so yeah well i i kind of feel that the uh it's the sparks that we create through our co-creation it's the sparks going off of our epiphanies and uh, imaginations, uh, you know, the light bulb going off. Uh, <clears throat> I really think that that is the purpose of, or not the purpose, but the, the destiny, the, the thing that we do as, as human beings that is like our parents, um, we are stardust. 
and and our our father is a star and i feel that we are sparkles and <laughs> each time that we get together and spark an idea or spark a co-creation we create that of which we have been made um, and when we create it in real time in matter through our wills and our energy and our intention that is walking the path that is um, destined to be ours I, I figure that there's going to be our heart gardens everywhere um, where we're going to be able to sparkle like crazy together and that is I feel the body of the one that we are nodes in the body the organs are the cities and we are the uh, the sensory system of Mama Gaia. Mm -hmm. All yeah. sorts of wonderful yeah. things. Uh, these, these are the things that you think of when you're uh, <sighs> a questing mind with, with uh, mm, not enough to engage. So I didn't engage with what everybody else was thinking. I was off thinking my own thoughts. And so, uh, you know, not following anybody else, but allowing my own intuition to lead me down garden paths. Um, and it's, uh, it's been fun. I, I can't imagine too many other people though, wandering down similar paths and yet there are a lot of people who have um like bruce lipton uh, and and uh annalise smitsman who says talking about the difference that will make the difference and uh i i feel that it's going to be um an acknowledgement of the one that we are that is going to make the difference uh, and we'll stop fighting against each other and start working together to accomplish the will of uh, the, the collective will. It's like our body had to learn how to cry um, and it needed to all get together to learn how to walk. <laughs> Uh, all the cells together, <laughs> you know, this is how you do it. Oh, oh, oh gravity's going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, right about now, it's like there is an awful lot of, of reality that is going to get us. Uh, and so it's kind of time for us to listen to uh, the rest of our body and, and call out to the rest of our body. And that's what I think that the conversation is for. We need to talk to each other and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I believe in what you're doing and I'm grateful that you're doing it and I want to support you any way I can. Yeah. We, the, the main thing we just need to do is keep letting people know that we're here yeah. and, and that they're welcome. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, I'm, I don't know, I think I just tired myself out uh, over a, a couple months there. And uh, I even forgot my own open house, which was, should have been Monday. <laughs> oh. Fortunate, fortunately, I didn't uh, really, uh, other than my plug very late in the first pet press conference so i'm sure it was easily missed uh, it's but i'll have to i'm gonna have to get on that uh second monday of each month is what i had set up i may have to change the day but it was for start with an hour go as long as we need you know uh, just ideas to share 
on anything sustainable, this, even the small ideas that you can share that will work for some people, if it's not for everybody that makes their life you know, more sustainable. And, uh, you know, just see where it goes. Um, well, there's, there's something that kind of would be up that direction. Would you like to go into that with me? Um, I don't know if I mentioned it to you before. Maybe I have about bulrushes. Yeah. Yep. Now, uh, I've got a document that talks of all about it, um, and I could share that with you. Sure. Would you like to see that? Yes, I would. All right. Let me see what I can do. You know, there was at some point we. There was a confusion as to whether or not cattails and bulrushes are the same thing, which which they're not. They're two two very different things. Yes. And then and then I so so it it, it it is bulrushes and not cattails that, that you're thinking of. What I realized is that uh the word uh, cattails describes it more vividly for people. They are known as bulrushes. Bull meaning big and rushes meaning the three-sided leaf that is um, the, the, uh, the cattail leaf, bulrushes. So, and, and that is um, what is <clears throat> known. Now, cat cattails have a, f a big, flat, two-sided leaf. Uh, it seems two-sided, but it's actually one of those sides has um, um, a point on it. So it's like it, it's got a, a centered um, spine, and one side has no center spine. So that one's flat and then there's two other sides. Hmm. And that allows um, the insulation factor that uh, allows them to use it to make um, uh, winter dwellings out of them um, by, by using woven mats made of bulrushes. You're checking me up, aren't you? Good for you. Oh, I'm looking for the picture I had the other day because cattails and bulrushes are, are two totally different things. Okay, good. But the, the cattails that grow around here are, oh, I was trying to find the picture because I, I'm not trusting my description of the- 68 the, feet tall, they threw, you know, you know what a tulip leaf looks like, right? Yeah. That that's the that's what cattails have when you know they just yeah. gotta find the picture I had. And bulrushes have, like you said, a three-sided kind of uh, hollow stem almost. Oh, oh, okay. Bull, the rushes, okay. Um the the um, the difference is the flower in the bulrushes that I'm talking about. The bulrushes that I'm talking about have the cattail um, seed um, okay, that's... rod uh, flower spike. That's what it is. This, maybe this was a, a, and the other ones have little um, um, cascades of balls. Right. And those are, I believe, actually more like reeds. Yeah, the, the, the bulrush I would call more of a reed. Yeah. That's not the kind I'm talking about. 
I'm talking about the ones with the flower spikes because the flower spikes are actually edible. Oh, pretty much every part of the cat tail is edible. Yeah, I screen had it. Share real quick. Hmm? And screen share the picture that I found that's a pretty decent picture. Please do. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. See, it's got, that's the cattail and that's the bulrush. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, every I know every, every part of these are, are, are edible or usable in some way. When, when these leaves where they join at the, you know, at the stem, if you pull that apart a little bit, there's like a jelly in there that's, that's a good antiseptic. Yeah, you can you can eat the tubers and the and the yeah. I'm talking make, to the make flower out of this. Make make flower out of this. That's right. And the inner pith of the plant is um, sweet, and if you dry it, you can use it like flour. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot of lot of different things. Yeah. I know we used to we used to go out and pick them. If you when you pick them young enough, you don't have to worry about them, you know, blowing up in your house because we used them a lot in the flower shop. And you have to pick them really, really young, and then they they stay tight. Yeah. Yeah. You. That's what I'm trying to. Well, that's wonderful. And um, I, the, the idea of using um, cattails um, has been an idea um, since about uh, 2013 or 2014. I, I came up with the, the idea of uh, perhaps starting the, uh, what I called the communal community garden, uh, the beginning uh, embryo stage of our heart <laughs> gardens. And I sent a letter to them and uh, I'd like to, to, to read that to you if I may. Awesome. And so this is an excerpt from that letter. The final thing to talk about now is what do we grow? We can grow all sorts of vegetables and even fruit trees like Vancouver and maybe even grain, but I believe bulrushes are the way to go. First Nations know this plant. Like them, it's been around since before history began, but again, like them, bulrushes are not as plentiful as they once were. Their value and potential is not known in today's world. First Nations are stewards of the land and their purpose is to remind us of our past, our connection to the earth. I believe the purpose of bulrushes is to feed the future people living in cities of the world of tomorrow. Bulrushes grow almost anywhere and can be used in so many ways. You can eat the tubers any time of year and in season, the sprouts, shoots, inner pith, flower spike and seeds either as flower or whole, as the primary crop of the Our Heart Gardens, it can be the icon of the garden. It is self-fertilizing and only needs six inches of growing medium, and it doesn't have to be harvested this year or next. Because it is perennial, it was, will stand ready for us, next year's crop already planted, or food without storage issues. Some of those specially designed boxes planted at the garden could be moved out to the streets of the city to provide shade, habitat, noise mitigation, and screening of construction and highways, and then moved back to the garden for harvesting. Maybe we can get the great chefs of today to create some great recipes and compete on TV, perhaps partnered with a First Nations elder. Such publicity would be very exciting and encouraging. 
the beauty and noise mitigation factors alone make this a valuable plant. But when people know about it and see such abundant food growing all around us, it will lift our spirits, give us hope, give us back our pride and our power. Working together in a garden to meet our needs, we can end hunger, loneliness, and clinical depression, first here in our community and in time throughout the world. That's the end of what I wrote, but what I also have come to realize that the, the seeds that I planted uh, one year as um, started them in a bin, you know, a toughy bin, you know, about a foot deep. Um, I took a part of a seed um, spike and I, I put it in there with some water. And <laughs> a lot of seeds. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I, I just said to them as I left, you know, just keep giving this water. It, it'll be fine. Just keep giving it water. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got back uh, at the end of the season, uh, I guess, uh, five months later, and I couldn't get it out of the bin. <laughs> it was solid. <laughs> Oh man, um, yeah. And uh, so uh, what I'd really like to see happen is um, transplanting, like you were talking about, you know, each baby planted individually, you know, and then cared for and loved, or at least combed out from the rest of the mass, <laughs> you know, swooshed a little in water trays, you know, so that you get a single layer and you can harvest it like uh, wheatgrass, you know. Uh, Just wondering how, how that how that would be for like a microgreen. I don't know. I don't know either, you know, why not? You know, I, I, that's the thing is that if there is constantly, if, if we've got this, the seed spikes, the, the flower spikes dried and ready to go, you can use those seeds in sequence. And so, you know, feed them out once the plants are, are past the eating stage, put them out where they're, they can get into the air and clean the air outside. We don't need to keep them all indoors. They'll, they'll, they'll last outside. That's one of those crops that you don't have to worry about. Right. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 the weather events that we're going through now, we, we need to think outside the box a little. And maybe inside the box is where our crops need to grow. <laughs> um, so I, I really like the idea of microgreens of that type and of uh, uh, using the socks perhaps to grow um, uh, the seed spikes. Well, it's perennial. So as long as it's got water. Yeah, they just need enough water. And they'll clean the water. I mean, that is what reeds do rushes and reeds do they clean the water so i see them as being an intrinsic partner in the closed what i'd like to see is a closed system for our heart gardens but you know um water and um power until we can figure out how to um uh get the the machines needed to create pop the power of people uh or the green power machine uh that's where i really see the benefit you know looking at this as like a system a small system and how do we create all that we need within each community center getting all these pieces yeah 
Yeah, I know. I know every so many places have towns have their empty buildings. Like even even the in our neck of the woods here, the the mall. Every time you drive by the mall, what you know that was packed full of you know a hundred and some stores. Uh, it looks darker and darker. Yes. And, and now I think there's only only a couple a couple in there at the at the one end the the theater that's in the mall isn't going because of COVID. So Marco, malls are a thing of the past. Even yeah. when COVID is gone, I, I think don't they, think people are run, gonna run out to the department stores. No. It, it's like the malls have been dying a slow death for about 20 years now. Yeah, yeah. And, they and have. So like I see that that what was what used to be a Sears, a Macy's, a JC Penney, and, and a couple other of those big ones at that end is now indoor storage facility. Yeah, yeah. They used to sell it, now they store it. Um, and, and really, those, those are resources that need to go back into, um, into life. And we need to stop making so much stuff that ends up in the landfill. You know, we've got to use the resources that we already have. They've got to shut down the clothing manufacturers. I'm sorry. They really, I know that they make money um, you know, and, and th that supports people, but it is on, it's not creating thing, anything that people need. We got to shut it down. The clothing industry is like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It you know, really is. One, you know, it, it, it's such a short time with all the new technology. Uh, these designer outfits are copied and on the on on the not, oh i guess partially there's a black market and for knockoffs and and then there's you know the the knockoffs that manage to be um you know like like the fan the like gucci spelled with wrong you know or, or whatever those uh, I mean they're they're you know from from the day something debuts at, at, at a Paris show you know the knockoffs are 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 there within like five weeks or something like yeah. that yeah and so it's, it's like isn't that illegal <laughs> it should be illegal <laughs> well, that's that's the, like art I mean to me that's plagiarism yeah well you know, and then too, just as far as the clothing, you know, I'm talking about the, the lower levels, the knockoffs, you know, because there's, you know, the 1%, I'm not sure how much clothing they go through, but you know, the, the rest of us are going I'm through. I'm sure they warehouse a lot of it. But like the church I go to, they, they accept donations and, and uh, they, they took over like a whole school. This is one of your repurposing a building. Yeah. They, they 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 took it over and uh, when their when their uh, church got bought out by the bridge authority, the Blue Water Bridge Authority, as they're expanding things on the for the crossing of, to Canada here, yeah. the, the bridges. So they got this outrageous million and something dollar for their scrawny little church and they bought a school that had just closed and they turned each classroom is like either like for men's clothing there's a room for toiletries there's a room for for children certain ages there's a room nice teens adults one room they give out frozen food nice uh, you know, there's sounds like an our heart gardens in and, a way. And, yeah. And they have, they have like one room that's called this and that you can get anything in there from, from, uh, you know, household items, bedding, yeah. bedding, 
curtains and, and, and appliances and cooking and nice and some craft stuff. So you, 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 you go into each room yeah. and uh, get what you need. And, nice. and, and then there's like, sometimes there's like furniture and things in, in the one hallway that are too big to end up anywhere. And it's, it's like, you just, you know, if it's something you can use, put your name, you know, crazy things show up. Uh, well, actually, my, my monitor here, my second monitor, that came from there. Nice. So, yeah, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to afford that monitor otherwise. Yeah. But, but back to the clothing part of it, you know, I was sitting with Pastor one, one uh, day, and he said, you know, he said, it's just, you know, we're, we're serving like, you know, 300-plus uh, families are, are being cared for with, you know, and then there's a room there where they have fresh produce and bread products, you know, too. Um, and I'm sure I've missed some kind of a room there. But over 350 families every month. And he said, we can't give away the clothing that we get donated. He said, you see that extra long semi-trailer sitting in the parking lot, the, the extra parking lot? He said... That's almost full of the clothes that, that sit more than a couple cycles in their, their system. And he said, when that's full, it's going to Africa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. You know, all of their, um, and, and this, they, the, they, they used to use different materials. Their, their own industries have, failed because of our dumping all our shit on them. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> so no, that's, that's just it. He said, he said, you know, he was, he was looking at it as, you know, how, how charitable their donors were. And, you know, it wasn't important for me to get into it with him at that point, but you know, the, 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 all the damage to the environment, all these cheap clothes that we keep buying, and and, and a lot of things they, they aren't even worn when they come through. You know, you can get things brand new with the tags on them. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, people nobody would ever even wore it. Buy them in the store, take them home. Oh, it didn't fit. Put it in the recycle. You know, to give away. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a friend, well, my roommate, um, she uses like recycled bed skirts to make children's clothing. Um, the, you know, the eyelet lace for a bed skirt yeah. makes adorable clothes for a little girl. And of course, I got my granddaughter. And so I, I she got a, a little shirt made out of this. And it's, it's gorgeous. It's like, the materials of the past are actually nicer when they're made into children's or into clothing because it doesn't have all the sizing in it. Uh, it it's comfortably worn, you know, it's, it's used to being, you know, flexed, you know, that makes a difference. Yeah. I'd really like to be able to empower the, 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 seer, the sewers. Uh, to, you know, have at the material. I mean, you look at the cost of materials these days. The material stores are going, uh, um, are, are challenged. Um, and so they're warehousing materials. Um, my, my favorite material is the one that I, um, uh, I had to try to, I got a, a, a long skirt years and years ago. Uh, that was made of kind of a, a, a kind of ultra suede, but it's soft. Uh, so it looks kind of like black suede, but it's, um, it's soft and it's, it's beautiful. And it finally, it's not as black as it once was. And it doesn't go with the rest of my blacks. It's not the right black. So you don't, can't wear two different blacks together yeah so yes. i had to go and get my my skirt replaced and it this piece of material we had to look through a lot of material 
Um, but it was on 70% off. Now timing is everything. And the skirt ended, you know, I love it. And, you know, I, I left and I thought, oh, you know, geez, you know, I, I want to make a wrap as well. So I had to go back and get another piece of material. And then I left and I, I drove away and I'm, I'm halfway across town. And I realized that, you know, if anything happens and I want to make something else, I'm going back. I went back and I bought the rest of the bolt. Nobody is going to get any of it. Somehow but I at seventy percent off. I couldn't say no. That's sorry. See, I've I've done some 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 crazy things. This one store where my uh, ex-wife used to work. They were having a big sale, and she says, "Oh, I know how you love a sale. You should come down to our sale." And it was this box of t-shirts that said uh, 25 cents each for, for t-shirts, right? But they had some dumb saying on them, you know? It was like, come on down to downtown. So I, I can't remember. It was, it was quite a few years ago. Uh, but they were 25 cents and 70% and off on the 70% off table. So 70% off of 25 cents a piece. I bought, I bought like a, a hundred of them, whatever they had sitting there, you know? Yeah. And so I would, when I was working, working on the line in the kitchen on the hot days or cleaning or whatever, I, I have that t-shirt on, you know, and it's like, so I, the, the one day one of the waitresses comes in and she says, you know, she says, I, I, I wonder if you could, and she started blushing. She's like, I, you know, I, I don't want to be a, a venue. And it's, it's like, if you could just come out to my car and, and, and I'll explain. Because you got out there and she said, look, I have all these clothes. She said, I know, I see you wearing that same t-shirt all the time. And, and I realized, you know, you, you must be having a hard time. And I, so I brought all these and I'm like, no, 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 it's not like that. <laughs> There's, you know, I got them on sale and I have like a hundred of them. I, you know, I can, I can wear them for three months and not have to wash the body. You know, not that I would do that, but you know, I, I literally, you know, they're just convenient. And, and she, I, we got a good chuckle out, but I said, you know, I don't mind that, that jacket there looks pretty good. I could use that. <laughs> you know, it was, it was pretty cool. But yeah. When, when, oh, you're on mute, Shannon. Yeah, um, Joan has been waiting in the waiting room, and and so maybe we might. Yeah. Why aren't we? Why aren't we seeing it? Oh. Oops. No, wait. I'm. We should have heard the bell. Oh, uh, let me go back and ask yeah, her. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me okay. see, um, um, I don't she said, I've been waiting oh, yep, to get there in. She there oh, she is. Yep. Okay, good. To Nina also. Okay. Try and get into that. Well, it's a good thing she knew who to call, huh? <laughs> yeah. I wonder how long he meant has been in there. She know in a minute here. There's John. Um, now. Oops, I guess I gotta talk. Uh, there, unmute. And I'm going to move rooms. Come with me. Mm -hmm. Marco is trying to get me there. <laughs> 
Good. Okay. I see that. That's good. Okay, now I'm not muted. Um, yeah, Joan is in the waiting room. The only way I can, I, I, I mean, she's in the Zoom room. But gonna I go and get her? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go there to send her here. I will pause the recording. Hi, Joan, so glad you could Hi, join. Uh, yeah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so yeah, I, 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 I sent, Marco to go and get you. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to come back and join us, but we've been having a wonderful conversation. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. we we started. I showed him Crow Surgeon. Oh, wonderful! And we talked about you know what on earth was that crow doing, and and <laughs> uh, and about you know the. Um, the convert the the communication that animals have that humans are left out of mm -hmm. yeah. and uh yeah uh, and the worm it, it, calling out i got a black edge help me out <laughs> <laughs> help, uh, help. <laughs> yeah that's that's how i imagine it anyway um and so uh we also talked about bulrushes and the fact that they oh. really should be called cattails. Okay. Because yeah. there are bulrushes that are different, that are actually rushes, more uh -huh. like reeds, more like oh, okay. reeds. Yeah. Reed. And yeah. instead of flower spikes, they have um, uh, balls, little balls. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cascading balls. Um, but cattails, that's a, a really, definitive and descriptive term there's no question there's yeah. only one plant that <laughs> looks like I, that i i grew up with cattails yeah <laughs> yeah yeah did you call them cattails yes or, or bull rush i've always cattails. i i hadn't really i mean i'd heard the term bull rush but uh cattail was some i guess i don't know my mother and father probably introduced the word to me yeah. uh cattail yeah yeah well, my, I, I my mother loved them too. She's... Oh, me too. Um, it's funny, you know, with the flower spike, there is another plant, at least one more plant. I mean, that's why they call them flower <laughs> spikes. It's the, a type of flower. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one that I know of is what um, is known as mullein, mullein. And it, it, it's a, a biennial. So the first year it's uh, uh, low growing uh, mm -hmm. from a center point with these big fuzzy leaves. And the Ooh. second year they throw up a flower spike and oh. it has yellow uh, flowers all the way up this flower spike. And, and it mm. can be quite tall. You'll see them on like prairies and whatnot. Um, ah. Ah. Okay. And so when my grandmother uh, was teaching me and and you know I pointed at the field across the the, mm -hmm. the street and I said what what are those plants and and she said well that's goldenrod and it made oh. sense to me yeah we have because a, <laughs> a, 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 but it's it doesn't look like a golden rod does it well yeah I, it, in the it's a it's a it's an autumn flower and what does it look like does you it know, have a, a golden it, it comes rod up, it comes up and it's got a yellow or golden uh, sort of fuzziness coming up at the top so maybe it's known as golden rod in other places this hmm. is very oh, interesting. Marco's here. Hello, Marco. Yeah, well, may, well, he was the one that found out about the the, um, the bulrushes and yeah, cattails. And cattails yeah. So maybe we'll send him on another research mission. Yeah, I <laughs> just have, you know, we get goldenrod here in the fall, and it it pops up in our backyard. It's, I mean, one of the wild flowers yeah. that uh, that pop up. Uh, Marco, 
Have you been listening to us? Uh, all I heard was research mission. <laughs> you did hear <laughs> us. Oh, goody. Um, what it is, is um, my grandmother told me that a plant was called goldenrod. And then I was told that, oh, no, that's not goldenrod. That's mullen. No, those are way two different things. Well, Couldn't yeah. possibly mistake one from the other. <laughs> but what I'm thinking is that my grandmother was from Germany. And someone could have um, pointed out a flower and she could have mistaken what they were pointing at. You know, maybe goldenrod and mullen were in the same plot and she expected that the golden rod would be the golden rod. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, golden, golden rod is a, there's, there's quite a few varieties, but they're all, you know, these little, little yellow, little spikes of right. little yellow flowers. Yeah. yeah. They come up in the they're, autumn. They're autumn flowers. Yeah. Little. Yeah. yeah there's usually, uh, usually, uh, uh, you know, like a different shape to them. You know, there's different varieties. They have different kind of shapes. The way they rearrange those, those but they're mm -hmm. clusters of tiny little yellow flowers. And yeah. you, so you know what mullen looks like, right? Yeah, mullen. And mullen has the big fuzzy leaves, and it makes the flower stalk. The second year, it's a biennial. And that flower stalk kind of looks like an ear of corn, nice and yellow at, at some point. Ooh, and, yeah. and I've seen it eaten that actually. Really? I had no idea. It, it well it was they they had just like sauteed the whole top right. and then eat it as if it's an ear of corn. Wow. I had no idea. But you can understand why someone would think that that was known as goldenrod. Because it was yellow. It was yellow yeah, and I, it was I, a I, rod I, that goes, you know, yeah. six, eight mm -hmm. feet tall. Yeah. I mean, you cannot, <laughs> of course it's goldenrod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we're finding out all sorts of things are edible. Oh, there's oh, so is, much. Oh, there yeah. she comes. I found somebody else, Marco? Yeah, Jimena has been having trouble getting in. Every time I met her, she just disappeared. Oh. Hmm. Uh, not uh, that it's an error that they can't connect. Yep, it's happening again. She's been joining now for this whole time I've been talking, but oh, not appearing wow. in the room. It's getting pretty frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping to uh, to talk to Carmena. It would be good to see her again. Yeah. yeah, she's been messaging me on Facebook to let me know that she can't get in. Lucky to have that. But but then when I when I do let her, you know, I have let her in and. She just, it says joining, 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 then she disappears. This oh. last, she actually showed up in the room, her name in just a black square. And at, at our end and on her end, it was just said, gives a, a Zoom error page. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you for doing all the work you do, Marco. Oh, my it's... hero, my, my, my <laughs> social argonaut. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like fun, Joan? Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was funny after you read that to me. I think it was the, I think it was the next day. Stan appeared and had mentioned it too, and I'm like, that's so funny because Shannon just made me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh. From my point of view, it's um, it's actually being talked about in Humanity Rising and Cities Rising this week. You know, I'm involved with that, right, Ro uh, Joan? Yeah. Yeah. 
cities rising. Um, and so far, the feedback on that has been really, really good. Oh, good. This was yeah. day two, right? Yeah, that, um, it was day two. <laughs> Not as bad as day one for me, because <laughs> after um, doing, you know, the, the four hours, five hours with them, another three hours had to be spent on documentation. And so I'm, uh, I didn't do that today. Uh, and, and yeah, so I took a little time for self care. And oh, that good. was, oh, yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. And tomorrow, you know, this is, it's a big week. And so I'm cutting myself a lot of slack to allow myself Good. to, you know, yeah. uh, not push. But then the big push is going to be on again for uh, Peace Week, which is coming in March. Oh, at least there's a month in between. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And, and there's so, and what is kind of being revealed as needing to be addressed is justice. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have chosen to deal with justice, you know, personally. Um, it's just such a hard topic. And um, so, yeah. Um, uh, getting the, the, the boot in the butt get with it girl it's like okay <laughs> yeah, um, yeah yeah but uh yeah it's really important that uh we start on um, encouraging people to stand up and be truthful um and uh it's a very good way to put it yeah um if you don't do it this time around. We all suffer for it. It's true. Yeah. I can tell you that personally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and it's, it's also not good enough to, um, you know, pay lip service and, and to not, follow through and to mm -hmm. to let your uh responsibilities take care of themselves uh, and and realizing that what you buy has a cost mm -hmm. far more important than money uh, mm -hmm. and the the value of things is not reflected in the the price tag that's on it volunteer hours are far more valuable than the hours that are bought. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we need to empower our volunteers. And right now our volunteers, uh, the systems that support the volunteerism, they're falling apart because they don't have the money to support them. And so how do we get the support that wants to be there to be there and it's so the whole thing needs to be restructured well isn't that opportune we we yeah i mean this is the opportunity that our heart gardens the plan mm -hmm. needs in order to be accepted and as needed and yes that's a really good plan and we should get behind that. And so, Absolutely. yeah, I, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, the way that happens is revealed real soon. There's um, a woman, Sharon Joy Kleisch. Oh, nice name. Oh, truly. And she goes <laughs> by both first names, Sharon Joy. Yeah, I, like uh, uh, I, I truly love it. And uh, she's down in Florida and she's got 86 acres <gasps> of sea Ooh. land that is available for redevelopment. Perfect. 
in the city. Perfect. Yes. I would love to help her figure out what to put what, on that. What map. city? What do you know what city? No. No. There's so many down there. <laughs> yeah. Um and I wish I wish I could say. Um, and what I could say is that I could figure out, ah, opening space for peace and high performance 2021. It's a virtual gathering happening January 22 Ooh. to 24. And it talks about how do we engage 8 billion people in meaningful conversation? Marco, you might be interested in this. <laughs> uh, I have to make that smaller so that I can see that larger. Let me just do a little Windows management here. <laughs> uh, where did it go? That's not the one I wanted. I want this one. Okay. <laughs> Windows management. So, Marco, shall I read to you? I'm going to read to you anyway. Um, you don't have to answer. <laughs> he says, thanks. <laughs> okay. So, it says, um, the need and yearning to open more and more space has never been greater on our planet. These urgent times need us everywhere. Together, we must challenge ourselves. Oops, everywhere. I have to make the window larger to get it all in. So uh, greater on our planet, these urgent times need us everywhere, all of us, head and heart. Together, we must challenge ourselves to invite broadly, to engage and inspire each other to action. The key question and challenge facing us now could be, how do we engage 8 billion people in meaningful conversation? The opening space for peace and high performance gathering held at International House in New York City with its timeless theme is a long-standing tradition. This year, it will find its virtual home on Kiko Chat and Zoom. We welcome individuals and groups who are seeking to learn and experience open space technology for the very first time, or others who wish to deepen their facilitation practice with colleagues and friends. It will unfold in the spirit of open space with its guiding five principles and law ignited by a theme that has guided passion and responsibility over the years. We will seek the simple ways to engage, learn and share virtually together. Just as we have in the past, it will happen in January, honoring the legacy of Martin Luther King. In 2020, Harrison Owen, the originator of open space technology, presciently spoke of these times with all its system breakdowns and challenges as an extraordinary opportunity to engage 8 billion people in useful conversation. It is a call to conversation and action that resonates for these times. We look forward to being with you. He goes into, the piece goes into history and context, the program, donation, contact, your hosts, uh, and when. So shall I continue reading? Yes. All right. History and context. The experiment of open space technology, OST, began more than 30 years ago and has subsequently been run hundreds of thousands of times. No less than 140 countries and millions of people have been involved with groups ranging from five to 4,000 people. OST is an approach that invites purpose-driven leadership, including a way for hosting meetings, conflict-minded peace building, conferences, corporate style retreats, symposiums, and community summit events focused on a specific and important purpose or task, but beginning without any formal agenda beyond the overall purpose or theme. Open space has shown us that hugely complex and conflicted issues can be dealt with productively in an environment of respect, hope, 
trust, and even a degree of intimacy and affection amongst prior sworn enemies. Some people have viewed the results as counterintuitive, unbelievable, even magic. The results <laughs> continue. However, the magic is not OST. Rather, it is the force that underlies it, the power of self-organization. By understanding, trusting, and utilizing the primal force of self-organization, we will be able to freely pursue the fulfillment of our individual and collective potential with energy and simplicity. We will collaboratively engage in the natural dance of order and chaos that leads to peace and high performance. Very nice. The program. The program will unfold virtually over three days, January 22 to 24, between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. EST each day. We encourage you to participate in all three days, though it is possible to join us for one or two full days. Day one will emphasize the fundamentals of OST facilitation. It will be an opportunity to experience the open space process and learn slash rediscover the basics such as core principles, invitation, the planning process, when to use open space, action approaches, and role and behavior of the facilitator. For experienced practitioners, it will be an opportunity to re-immerse yourself in the rituals and lifelong practice of this work virtually. Days two and three. The design for each of the following two days is identical. In the morning, Harrison Owen, the originator, will offer morning reflections that include creating the conditions for peace and high performance. And on the final day, opening space in our lives, our organizations, and our planet. Following this, all participants will have the opportunity to fully engage in dialogue and action-oriented initiatives around the theme. We will all be teachers. We will all be learners. We will all increase our mastery. At the conclusion, you will have a compendium of materials online, including the proceedings of the sessions to remind you of your experience, as well as some new connections to support you in your new ventures. Many will even have had the opportunity to practice virtually facilitating open space during our time together. And they provide a link may help you add an event in your time zone. <coughs> Pardon me. Thank you. There is a donation. Our desire is to include all who want to participate. The suggested donation is $25 for the three days to cover our costs. Any amount above will be welcome with the goal of continuous educational activities to foster learning in open space throughout the OSI US. If financial circumstances are difficult, know that you will be welcome at no cost. Registration is necessary to have access to the sessions and the contact. And then it goes into the hosts and that would be Harrison Owen, Karen J. Davis, Suzanne Daigle, and um, then they go on to the register, help spread the word. So um, I invite feedback. No, oh, that sounds very interesting. Uh, you mentioned something while you were reading about New York City. Mm -hmm. and I can't remember the name of the place, but it was something center. Can okay. you see, can you find that again? Uh-huh. And tell me what the International name is. House International in New House. York City. I'm trying to uh, picture where that is because I grew up in New York City, but it could be a newer place at this point. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. International oh, House. Wait a minute. Go there. Go there. International House, New York City. Copy that. Curious where that is. 
I'm just going to find out right now. Uh, transforming Global Perspectives. Um, it's at 500 Riverside Drive in New Ooh. York City. Okay. You know where that is? I don't know exactly where 500 Riverside is, but I know where Riverside Drive is, and it depends on, that's like on the drive, so what the side, you know, the, the other streets coming into Riverside Drive would tell me more where it is, but 500 Riverside Drive, I'll let you, I could find it, and it'll tell me exactly where it is. It could be, sounds like it could be above Midtown toward uh, they, the they've got the side. General Grant National Memorial close to it. That sounds like it's in the Upper West Side. Yeah, yeah the Grant. And as a matter of fact, the cloisters are not too far from there. You want to see some pictures? Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so I will share my screen. And share. And so... I'll make this big. Oh, yeah. How lovely. Timeless theme. So we will go through these. Oh, very nice. Do you recognize it yet? That, I'm, I'm not the Grant uh, Memorial, uh, but uh, not really sure at this point right now. Oh, and things can change since the last time I was in the city. Oh, that's totally, I recognize that. Um, in the, Very recognizable. In the, in the city, um, the last time I was there, well, actually, I was there in 1998 briefly yeah. for a sort of vacation with Alex. Yeah. And... Um, but before that, um, when I used to live there, that would be 1989 when the last time I was in the city. Wow, that's a long time ago, 30 years. Yeah, so this is where it is. And that is very nice. And that looks like almost possibly the East uh, Estuary or Hudson River. It's hard to oh. tell exactly. Well, that's kind of oh. pretty. Oh, very nice. Oh, I love that. That's just gorgeous. Ah, International House. Yeah. That's the Hudson River. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, oh, oh that's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not. But, that's no, but I was pretty. looking at the building. Yeah. Yeah. And where, and where it was located. So it's, it's, yeah, it makes sense. The Riverside Drive is actually on the Hudson. Oh, well, they got good food. Yeah. <laughs> International House. It looks like it's been there a while. Yeah, it's an older building for sure. Absolutely. Oh, that man. That looks like, oh, that looks so familiar. Yeah. Hmm. That's got oh, that that's round beautiful. building again. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. The round building. But the one going up. The, the, Should be across the street from it. I suspect that's that's way further up, you know, uptown, not down, not in midtown at all. It's way further. Well, uptown. that round building, you oh, okay. That's just there it is again. Oh, nice. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never been to New York. Oh, you should come. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it really is such a gorgeous place. Oh, wow. Nice big rooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful chandelier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's it. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. No, well, you're welcome. Stop share. There Very you nice. Are. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Oh, that was fun. I'm yeah, yeah. I've been to a little bit of New York now. <laughs> a little bit. 
gosh, it's changed so much too. I mean, I I grew up, you know, in the I was born in the fifties, so I you know I grew up in it really getting to know the city once I got into junior high school and high school, going into the city and and in when I say going into the city, actually most people think this way of Manhattan. And that's really, so when you say I'm going into the city, I lived in the city, but I lived in uh, another borough that was part of the city. So, you know, there's like five of them and um, Manhattan is the main part. Mm. Um, mm. So, and that's where, that's where everybody just went. Well, when I went to college, I was living down uh, in, in Washington Square. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And how old were you when you were doing that? Um, I started, it's odd, I started college four years after I graduated high school um, because I went actually out to Colorado and <laughs> took a sort of a, a, a turn. Uh -huh. But then I, I, I went in, um, so it was probably 1971 or 72 when I, when I started uh, college. and. In 74, I moved into the um, dormitory at NYU, uh, which was down in Washington Square on University Place. And NYU uh, is beautiful. Well, it's got more than one campus, but it's a beautiful campus down there. And Washington Square is just amazing. And, and the art that's um, on, on uh, the park is is beautiful and there's just so much down down in that area i love it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have much like that here in kamloops um they our oldest building is the courthouse how old and, and it's i believe it's the only stone building Ooh. yeah it, so it was quite up there up, what do you mean up there? In age, in time. Oh, you know. yeah. That mm. would have been 18. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Somewhere. Fabulous. Yeah, well, it, between that and the, uh, the, the little houses that were built for the, mm -hmm. um, the uh, railroad people that line, you know, right beside mm -hmm. the railroad. Um, yeah, they, there's some of them that have lasted. You know, we have, I was, uh, we have some heritage here. But Yay. when I was growing up, it was just cowboys and Indians, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. And it was a dust bowl. And they have done an amazing job on this city. Mm. You know, um, there the whirlwinds that used to come through here and pick up the dust. And it was just, wow. it was so, so, um, so much more semi-desert than what it is Ooh. now. You know, human beings are fabulous gardeners mm -hmm. and, and we can do amazing things to regenerate uh, the earth and, and to make her more beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, and this is actually what I feel is the purpose of humanity is to, to groom our mother. And to bring her back to. And this, if we take it as a personal um, goal mm -hmm. to uh, help her be her best again, yeah. uh, we could help each other and make it be a joyful job and mm -hmm. and this is truly what i uh, deeply desire to have happen uh, and so the our heart gardens idea it is more than just repurposed buildings absolutely, oh, absolutely. the network needs to go out and embrace the entire planet mm -hmm. uh, allowing her to have her way in the wilds but by working together uh you know uh you got to think about like the amazon is actually planted by humanity 
as a food forest. Mm -hmm. And that has provided the most amazing abundance for thousands of years. Yeah. Now we have the opportunity to do the same kind of thing. When we cover the planet with green, she will stop being so fussy. <laughs> Things That's will sit down. Mm -hmm. We will mitigate climate change by embracing her with the parts of her that are missing, mm -hmm. which is the green parts. Yeah. And we have taken away an awful lot of green stuff. We need to put it Sadly, back. Sadly, yeah. Put it back that, and help more grow. <laughs> absolutely. And that's what I like about having moved up here. Yeah. Because there is a lot of green. New England and New York is connected to New England. Uh, the part of New York that I live in, the eastern part, uh, southeastern um, part of upstate, um, is connected directly all the way from, from Connecticut, Massachusetts, you know, and, and then up to Canada. Um, and it's so beautiful and so green. And uh, we just, you know, what's interesting, um, the uh, executive of Dutchess County talks a great deal about all the stuff that's going on. And one of the things that he's been involved with, though, that's kind of side projects is opening what are trails that go between the different counties. Yeah. And, and, and there, he calls them rail trails, but uh, just so beautiful, so well done. And this is very exciting for me because when I first moved up here, there was a place called Lake Walton, a lake. Yeah. And um, it was beautiful. And it was a, a summer place and they closed it down and they're opening it back up. And oh. this is this is 30 years later. Yeah. So it, it's just it's it's beautiful up here. I really oh. do love it. Yeah. And the, there's you know, I mean, this is a part of new york state that's above the more urban settings and stuff even though we do have some cities that are in this area it's still so much more rural yeah. and uh, so much land and there's so many farms nice yeah. yeah 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 it's, it's i won't worry about you going hungry well no i wouldn't anyway <laughs> I don't know nope. that much. <laughs> you live on air, darling. <laughs> I do. But it's it's not, you know, I mean, like the, there's so many farms in this area. And and there's one farm that is actually right not too far from here that has so many different parts of the year where there's so, like there's pumpkin patches in, in the autumn, and then there's so much, you know, like uh corn and, and things like that, you know, that are coming up in the, uh, in the summer and so many other types of uh, places. It's just wonderful. Well, yeah. And eating food in season when it is ripe right. is so much healthier. Yeah. Going with the cycles of the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, um, that being said, you know, 12 months a year, green food. Oh my God. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we need it, uh, yeah. you know, un unless we're going to depend on animal flesh for our mm -hmm. food. Yeah. And I while you. I honor the gifts of um, the animals' lives, mm -hmm. um, we haven't been honoring them. No. And until we can treat them with respect, um, and and help them to live f lives uh, that are worthy of living. Uh, we need to just stop. Mm -hmm. um, and and if we become a, a, a species of vegetarians, 
worse things could happen. Worse things have happened, are happening. We'd be brought Brachiosauruses. <laughs> <laughs> Brachiosauruses, yeah, broccoli. <laughs> well, the thing with that is I'm also very aware that, you know, if you lose a crop, mm -hmm. um, animals can forage. Oh, sure. And they can eat things that we can't. Oh, yeah. And so not making it, you know, a, a, a sacred thing, you know, you don't eat meat. Uh, I think that's wrong. Anything that, you know, uh, points fingers like that. Um, there are some things that, yeah, um, bar barbaric practices need to be stopped. Mm -hmm. But um, the honoring and use of an animal for, for the, the, the flesh that they have. I mean, that is the way of indigenous people. I mean, right. if they didn't have green vegetable, or if they didn't have animals up north, we would have no people up there. Right. So, you know, we, we have to be uh, open to the possibilities of, of things outside of our expectations mm -hmm. um, and uh, and there may come a time when uh, they don't have to eat meat but we're not there yet no I um, mean and 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 at least in this country people I, I can't even imagine that people have been brought up uh, not eating meat um, I can't even think of how far back in time it <laughs> went on here I mean, way back, you know, obviously, um, you know, that's just the way, you know, we were brought up. Unfortunately, um, it, the way the indigenous people did it is, is the correct, proper way, I think, you know, um, because that's what you mean what, hunting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but that's not the way that the contemporary and whenever that contemporary started, I'm not sure, but that's not the way that works. Animal and that's what's husbandry. wrong. Husbandry. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not right. I don't, for me, it's not right. I mean, for whoever wants well, it to be right, that's fine. I don't mind. Um, organic farms where they treat their animals like their friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, when the time is right and the animal uh, knows what's going on and, and you know, or doesn't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But what I saw, the, the image that I'm left with was of a prairie farm where off to the edge of the horizon, the, the crop of wheat or what mm. corn or whatever it was it had been hailed on the whole crop gone and there's this cow standing in the middle of the picture mm -hmm. and and what i said in in it was well at least we can kill the cow mm -hmm. when we need food we can't do anything with the crop but we can by the cow living throughout the time we've got time to put in a new crop because the animal protein will help us to get over that time of no crop mm -hmm. and and I, barbaric practices have to stop but we can honor the animals for giving their lives for our benefits you know there is honor in honoring Oh, well, at least that's my point of view. <laughs> it's a good point of view for you, yeah. I look forward to the day when we don't have to. That would be lovely. I of really course. look forward to when we figure out how to uh, honor the animals that we already have. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 
and make it possible for others to grow. And I see Marco's having a time and, you know, it's five after eight. And so we need to close Gaia's Zoom room for tonight. Aww. I'm going to stop the recording. It's been so nice having you with me, Joan. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And Marco, yeah, can you still hear us? No, he's muted. I don't think well, he's so. Muted. I don't know if he's yeah, muted. I know, but that doesn't mean he can't hear us. Yeah. So I will say goodbye to Marco, him and his beard. Hi, Marco. <laughs> Bye, Marco. <laughs> so up.